Well, what are we going to do today? We are going to take one of my Hypertufa troughs that has tiny dwarf irises in it. They did not bloom this year, and I don't know what the problem is, but I'm going to try to transplant. I know it's been years and years they've been in this trough. I'm not sure what the problem might be. Overcrowding, buried too deep. I'm not sure what it will be, but we're going to try to fix it. So first of all, I'm going to mix some soil. Sometimes I get asked how I mix soil, so I thought I would include that in here. Now what I do is just take any bag of rich potting soil. You can see it has a lot of peat in it and all the other fibrous things that a good potting soil have. This one's rich. It has some uh, fertilizer in it already. I add chicken grit. A lot of the times this is perfect for any kind of a succulent or sedum that you plant. So I like to include a little of that for the grittiness and drain value. And then uh, I have some uh, pea gravel. And that will be big and chunky gravel that will help. Now I do have perlite and vermiculite both. I prefer the vermiculite. So I have a big scoop to add into here. I'm only mixing about a gallon, maybe half gallon of soil here. And I'm adding Biotone, a good starter fertilizer. That's what Lorette Garden Answer uses, so that's what I'm going to use. But I'm adding about a half cup based on the amount of soil I'm mixing. And I tried to mix just a little bit more soil than I thought I would need because I hate to run out when I'm not finished. So we'll mix that all up thoroughly, and then we can go and get started. Those big chunks, it's nice to get those kind of uh, crumbled up just a little bit, so there's not a big chunk in there. Now these are my iris. You can't really tell from the picture, but they're only about four to five inches tall, and if and when they do bloom, they're only uh, the same height, but the bloom itself is most of the plant. The bloom will be four and five inches tall. I've got a picture of it back on the blog post that'll match this, that'll be noted below. Now this is Iris Pumella, I think, Pumela, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. If you have any different information, let me know. It's planted with sedum album, a coral carpet. I love that just because of the color changes and how thick and nice and tight it grows. I don't know if that's any of my problems of why it's not blooming, but I'm going to plant it without that and just move the sedum album someplace else. But you can see I have a lot of rich roots down in there. They're deep. They're even growing into the hypertuf itself since it's so porous. Now I'm pulling them apart and just to kind of check the root and check if I can feel any kind of a problem on a rhizome. I'm calling these rhizomes I'm assuming that's what they are. Some things um, advertise iris as bulbs, but these all seem to have a little, I don't know, a hard little lump like big full-grown irises have. Now this is the old soil. I don't really see any problem with it. It's, you know, looks good. You really can't tell its richness by looks, but it doesn't appear there's any problem with drainage. It's real gritty and sandy and everything, so I don't think drainage was a problem here. <coughs> now my Hypertufa planter is six, eight years old. I'm not sure how old it is, but my um, iris have been in there for at least five, six years. Now this is what they looked like in their little lumps that I brought them out. And I tried to make sure I cleaned them, cleaned the dead leaves off. And I learned into uh, my cleaning of them that I should peel it off the bottom as if I was peeling a banana instead of just trying to pull it or yank the little leaf off. 
but I filled it and kind of pressed down a little to pack it tightly. I don't want it to settle because then I would be tempted to um, want to fill it with more dirt. Now that sedum does try to grow into the crevices of the hypertufa. I like that. But look at this whole tray of the sedum album coral carpet that I'm going to get a replant. But anyway, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to separate into small clumps, some individual, some in the clumps that they have come out of the pot in. And here's where I'm talking about removing those uh, dead leaves. Some I tried to pull off and was not successful. It kind of like, I don't want to say ripped the plant, but seemed to tear it off. And it seemed the best way I did it was kind of to peel it downward like a banana. And that seemed to do the best. And that way I didn't lose the whole clump or the whole section of plant. And I just kind of settled them uh, sort of into the soil, but not deep into the soil, because I want the rhizome to be in the surface. So I've um, kind of speeded it up here because it just took too long to leave this on film, showing you every bit of it. But I've got them um, separated out cleaned up and kind of looked over for any pest problems, any borers. I couldn't find any evidence of borers in um, any of the uh, rhizomes themselves. So I'm hoping a borer isn't the problem. But otherwise these little blades or leaves look really healthy, except for the dead ones of course. But it is rimmed in a little white rim or at least a lighter colored rim. If that helps you to identify it for me, but I am thinking these are the Iris Pumilla. So I've got them kind of anchored in. Some of the leaves are a little bit high. I'll sprinkle, I'm sorry, roots are a little bit high, but I'll sprinkle some of the soil over that just to make sure that they are deep enough into the soil surface. Now I'm topping it off with gravel. I have a little bit of the pea gravel that I'm going to use and this will be mostly to suppress those roots so that they'll attach to the top of the soil and kind of, I don't know, dig down into the soil itself so that they'll be well rooted since it's, uh, what is it, mid-July, late July. Um, I'm hoping they have a lot of time to grow and get established for next spring because I'm really looking forward to blooms next spring. Now I do have some uh, extra gravel that I get at the dollar store. Those packs, they're two pounds and the packs are used to be a dollar. Now they're dollar twenty-five unless they've changed that again. And I'm also putting those on top, just kind of sprinkling them around. And once it's kind of pressed in, after I've watered it a few times and gotten it pressed in, if I see the roots are anchoring themselves down into the soil, then I may remove some of this and maybe place it with a finer gravel. But for right now, I just need this to kind of protect it. Hopefully the squirrels won't try to dig in it. I do have a lot of squirrel problems in this area. But we'll try our best. I may have to stick some of those forks upended into the trough if I see I have any problem. But I think it's going to look pretty good. I do miss the coral carpet. I really like that and I thought it really made an attractive trough. But unfortunately, I'm going to see if that's going to make a difference next year. I may sneak in a little bit here and there, and who knows, there may be a little coral carpet nub stuck down in there, and that'll sprout some more. Now, I've got another hypertufa bowl that I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this in here. And let me show you the peeling downward that I discovered. If I peeled it downward, it didn't damage the plant. It didn't seem to damage the plant as well worse as it did when I tried to give it a yank from the top and it just broke the whole little leaf off. Now 
I'm kind of getting these stuffed in in almost exactly the same way just putting a little bit of the soil over the um, the rhizome but leaving the rhizome exposed as much as I can let me see if I can get a close-up right here of the rhizome you can see that long I don't know like a long brown crayon type thing that extends out almost as long as the leaves are themselves but I'm gonna leave that along the surface and just cover it up with a little bit of soil and then again anchor this with some pea gravel hopefully that'll work for me I only reserved about five or six for the bowl some are just a tiny little blade so we'll see how that works and I'm not sure of what type of a hens and chicks this is it reminds me of the uh, arachnoid type but it does not have the little spider web, so I don't think it is that. But it's tiny, tiny and small and tightly packed together. Now look at the size of that rhizome. You can tell a lot are connected together and they could have been damaged and aren't sprouting like they should. But we're just kind of push them down in and see what I can do. Now I have my hypertufa bowl on a pedestal. So I moved that because it seemed a little tippy for me to try to uh, press the soil down and get my pot anchored in. Now I made those uh, pedestals quite a long time ago. Most of the ones I have now, there's a post back on my website showing how I made those and they make a really good stand for hypertufa bowls. Now you can see the roots are fine on these so I don't think we're having any drainage problem, no root problems, no root rot, nothing like that. And that can only lead me to suspect that the problem that they won't bloom is that they were buried too deeply. But I really like and hope that this pot will have some little irises. The iris blooms and it's just a little bloom sitting on the surface, just nestled among those leaves. Really cute. There's the pedestal. You can see how weather deteriorated it is because I made it oh sometime probably about maybe 2015 so they're eight ten years old and probably so is this bowl but I love the weathered look now the biotone that I put in the other I am going to put a little in this but since it's such a small bowl and I really don't want to add fertilizer to the succulents necessarily because I think they do better on lean soil. I'm just gonna sprinkle some around the edges and just kind of rough it in and then water it in and let it perhaps soak near the rhizomes and roots of the iris and help them to uh, grow next year. I think it's going to look really, really nice. This is the pretty small pea gravel. I like it best and I am just about out of it so I'm going to have to go buy another big bag of it. I just usually pick it up at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's usually no more than four, four and a quarter for a, um, I want to say a 50 pound bag, I'm not sure. But it's so nice to have around for this type of use and to put it in soil when you want good and excellent drainage. But that looks fine. Looks good.
it's going to be a pretty color. Now if I can just get the incentive to go over and plant the album in another bowl. And we're going to set these out in the sun. And these are pedestals for that little trough. And if you can't recognize that shape, those are red cup pedestals. Red cups make a nice large pedestal for a heavy trough or a long trough. So that's what I like to use. First try. It's slightly bit heavier now with the gravel in it, but we're going to try the gravel at least until I can see where the roots go down into the soil. And I will cover them slightly more when I get a little bit tinier. I think it looks really good. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.